We are discussing the um, arrest of MFLA. Obviously, mm -hmm. I know you are a staunch critic of the man, but if we start by asking you, do you think we have gone back to when, you know, arguing back and forth like we did in the year 2014, when the then uh, regime or government of good luck, Ebere Jonathan, was trying to arrest Sanusi, or do you think his own case is different from that of Sanusi? Uh, obviously, when you look at the level of uh, allegations, the the height of atrocities that have gone on under this regime, uh, it, it melts in complete streamy streamy or whatever it's called now. Before, as compared to what had happened during the the regime of um, uh, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, it's almost it's it's unbelievable. It's unheard of. Uh, it's uncomprehensible. The um the 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 kinds of allegations the figures and uh the storylines it's is just even the worst of criminals will like will, will will arrest you know mfl you know just based on the 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 news making round and some of the depth of knowledge of what has transpired under the buari uh, regime while he was um heading the apex bank so obviously, this is um, in the in the following hours and and weeks and days. Nigerians are going to be very astonished as regards the things that have happened under the watch of um, Emefiye. Before before you join me, there was um, an art um, that I read out which alluded that um, there was a one billion dollar um transaction that happened uh, with the ex um afri exim bank end of uh, end of april and that about 750 million dollars out of that money was quickly transferred to a dangote account in dubai and the president elect then quote unquote was not aware of that that he was arrested based on that transaction that was linked to the Dangote refinery. Then you ask yourself, should that then be the case? Why would he alone be arrested if it's such a thing? Or is it, are, are some individuals more equal than the others? That, that, that's also, this, this comes back to what uh, uh, I started saying while we introduced, you introduced me, that in, in the coming days, a lot are going to um, are going to be are going to unfold, and uh, Nigerians are going to be like in awe. This is just one side um, of reasoning and questioning. Like, yeah, should he be the only one? But I guess it has more to do with the fact that um, I I want to believe, and Nigerians wants to believe that this is just the beginning of um, the unfolding stories that uh, were going to be uh, and uh, and also the arrests you know that is going to begin you know so because there are many parts to this you know uh, I, I don't think going by the revelations of allegations that even the former president Muhammad Buhari would um, would still would, would um, sleep uh, pretty well in Dara or wherever he is and uh, so many other names too are going to you know come to the fore as we go so i i think it's going to be a very interesting so, journey yeah <laughs> so do you are you sitting down there we are sitting in two different locations in abuja are you sitting down there saying that uh believing for one second that whatever and whoever and however the investigation goes that someone in their right senses in the Nigerian context would ever talk about uh, inviting Buhari for questioning, talk less of even uh, exposing some of the things he's done. I tell you something, you know, when you look at the, I, and I still maintain because it's important to 
to say this even on this platform i've been on several platforms and uh, i know i was on we fm a few days ago where almost all the callers from a particular region of the country wanted to eat my head off because i was wondering if i could drive back home safe where i mentioned categorically that um, the placeholder president started off his regime uh, timorously in the very dangerous ground by the pronouncement of the um uh the removal of the subsidy uh regime and i said so because i mean the case is still in court um i can say that he is not my president not because i want to degrade or not because i i i am lawless but because the case is still in court and i believe in the nigeria judiciary i still have to hold on to something to believe in and if if truly we believe in that then you have to know that both the inauguration both the presidency of uh, president placeholder president Bola Metinubu is a placeholder and i understand that because there is there is no need to, to have a vacuum in any country especially a country like nigeria that is that is very uh, is, is on the edge it was important to have that inauguration However, it is a placeholder uh, inauguration, and therefore he is a placeholder president. But I tell you why I'm giving all this backdrop. To have the man come on on the first day, probably first hour, first of everything to make that kind of pronouncement, um, side by side while I query that, because there is no, there is no regime that loves the people. Any policy that puts an untold hardship on the people is not, is not a good policy. And I have said consistently, uh, as a leader and as a leadership consultant, I maintain that leadership is about inspiring the people. It's a difference between leadership and governance, where you have to probably play by the book. Leadership is more dynamic. And a great leader will not put an untold hardship on the people. You know, but again, I also said side by side that for somebody who can come out and damn every consequences and make such a pronouncement, it seemed to me that this guy can also is being given the greatest opportunity, given the time that he has to sit in that office. It means he can do and undo. And who knows, probably he has been given the most uh vital the greatest tool in life to be able to create such an impact within the short possible time that he has to be there who knows if he can come out and crumble the whatever shenanigans scam of a regime of subsidy and go right ahead to arrest and sack the man at the apex bank mazi i want to ask you i think we're in for some roller coaster beautiful ride within the particular short time that he has been given so this is what i'm thinking and i want to see it all play out i want to see all the people come i want to see uh the sabus i want to see the former accountant general who stole over a, a hundred billion i want to see president muhammad Buhari. i want to see the attorney general Ma malami i want to see all the people who have done the the most inhumane committed the most incredible atrocities and that people have not been able to mention that we can sit here today and call these names and to have a mayfield arrested today i think we're, we're in for some beautiful season in nigeria i think so so you obviously you know you are you are agreeing that um uh, well i i don't believe for one second that um beyond the charade that we see today that anything serious will come out of it. I mean, we've been here multiple times. Nothing. Because I don't see I don't see where crime fights crime. I don't see that. I don't see where illegitimacy fights, you know. I, 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 honestly, I don't know how to put it, but I do not have any yeah, 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 of hope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm on I'm, I'm I I am on the same side with you. We we roll the city of Abuja uh ensuring that we Together with you, we ensured that we brought to uh, the international community and, 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 the, and, and the global stage 
particularly the 2023 uh, February 25th fraud uh, committed by uh, Professor Yakub Mahmoud and his uh, some of his commissioners and and allies. We brought it to the international stage. We were out there with you for 23 days nonstop. From, from the U.S. Embassy to the INEC to the American Embassy, we went all over the place. So, of course, um, we, we are proponent. We propagated and we ensured that the whole world knew exactly what was going on. So, yeah, like you, but on one part, I'm saying that um, maybe who knows? Let's see how this is going to play out, you know, because uh, while I don't believe, while I, I, I don't see how that is going to work, Somewhere in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, let's, let's watch and see while we work and talk. Let's see how all this is going to play out, you know. So it's almost like, how do you call it now? Ah, it's not like one of those stories were told during, as described by the one of one of global novelists, Chinua Achebe, when he talked about the moonlight stories. Maybe we're going to sit and, and watch how this is all going to play out. Crime, dealing with crime. Uh -huh. Like we're right here in Abuja when we saw the most fortified uh, prison in the nation was broken yeah. into at, at daylight. Maybe we're in for some surprises again. Not Mazi, only broken into, they gave them advance oh, yeah. warning and they knew and they still exactly. have so, Exactly, exactly. I mean, now, now ask yourself, you see why I do not have any iota of hope is since then, has any single person within that prison services or correctional center been punished? Mm. The whole management. Who took blame for it? I mean... I, I, and, I, and I guess that brings us to what... This is why, again... I know that there is a possibility, even though, like I rightly said, the placeholder president can decide to do the unthinkable. That's what I'm thinking. That doesn't mean that we, we it, it does not exonerate our narrative. But I'm and just saying. If I if I yeah. if I if if I push you on, if I want to, you know, anchor on your narrative that you you're basically trying to push, and I, I say I take a step backwards. If you go back to the um, subsidy did he actually remove subsidy no he didn't because there was you know if you recall that buhari before ever he has kept saying it that end of june there's not going to be any subsidy in june there's not going to be any subsidy there was no in the uh, supplementary budget that was submitted there was zero for uh, for subsidy there so even in the speech read by bola meditinubu there was no mention, you know, what he actually did was ad lib. So the question is, was it just an ad lib or is it something he craftily, smartly thought about? Or is it just someone just, you know, like, um, um, you know, was, how did how you say that? Um, partial contact, something comes in immediately, partially, and he goes, to, it triggers, sparks something, it goes through the mouth. Is that something what happened? So at this point, we don't know. But you know, when we talk about subsidy removal, the way he has gone about it, I actually do not think it, it's it's inevitable. No matter what, who no matter who had taken over, there was no appropriation there. If you had, if you had wanted to do it, it would have mean going against the law. To go look for money and how you do it but one thing one thing that is very clear is like uh, uh peter b normally says he was going to do xyz that over 50 percent of this crude oil doesn't that we don't consume it that he was going to find out who drinks this oil without even coming in we can already we already find out the people drinking it like coffee you know we now know that chad Cameroon, Okada riders in Cameroon are protesting. Taxi drivers are protesting. Why? Because our own crude oil, our own oil has gone up in price. But if you ask me, I think we increased price because of our ineffectiveness to, to protect our border. If we could police our border, 
there is no reason why our oil should go over 250 naira. That's what that's that's my honest take. But again, uh, just like when we couldn't fight insecurity, uh, do a lot of things, the naira redesign policy stopped kidnapping overnight and stopped mm -hmm. a lot of things. But it it's the inability of the state to actually take full responsibility in protecting life and, and, and you know uh, lives of the citizens that actually leads to that. Yeah, and it, it, it's surprising why um, the 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 poor people of this nation, this great nation Nigeria, have always uh, have to be the ones at the receiving end each time. You know, uh, when you look at the exactly the subsidy regime, it has nothing to do with the poor people. When money was pumped to ensure that um, uh, the refineries uh, are revamped, it wasn't the poor people. Whatever gets to be done, it wasn't the poor people. And at the end of the day, the poor people, you know, are the ones at the receiving end. They're the ones paying over 500 naira, you know, for, for, for that. And meanwhile, the people who are responsible for this, who can afford to buy every liter for a million naira are going scot free. So I totally agree with you. For me, it's almost like you are reorganizing the crime for some other people. Mm -hmm. And this is why... Uh, it's um, some of us are speaking very hard on it. We're to, we're, if, if truly you mean well for the people, increase salary, put transportation palliative in place, ensure that one refinery alone, one of the big refineries in Nigeria is enough to serve our internal uh, consumption rate. We have all this already marshaled out. And of course, why the monopoly of refining of crude oil like we have seen you know, with the Dangote. We have come to the point where we can mention the name now because this is not permissible anymore. We've gone from salt, from sugar, from all kinds of things. No, we don't want to get to a country where we are building arsenals for just one dictatorial, you know, section or particular person in this country. We must liberate our policy and our system. Yeah, so grant certification for people to own and be able to uh, refine our, our 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 crude. Don't forget, don't forget, Mazi, that the abomination of this regime. People don't don't know, but it's it's, it's good to say it here. And as I said it's very annoying when I hear some of the uh, the discussions going on on some of the of the, of the traditional media houses where educated people. I mean, I have traveled around the world, and I don't want to sit under any. Mm, may not get angry to that point and spill things that are not required in terms of what we're supposed to say as a people. But the, our crude, which is one of the finest crude on planet Earth, we are forgetting that petrol is just one of the tiny products out of it. We have the jet fuel. We have the diesel. We have the kerosene. We have so many other pro byproducts from it. We're not even talking about all of this product. We're talking about just petrol which comes back, um, guess what? We don't even use our own petrol from our crude oil. They import some lesser non-quality product for us. That's what the NNPC keeps bringing in. That's why our cars are getting spoiled. That's why the pollution rate is increasing. That's why things, people are getting sick. Go to, to, to River State and see the amount of suits and all of that that are coming out even from just uh, 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 the production of the crude oil and Nigerians are paying us, suffering our environment has been degraded and all of that. All of that is, is, is there and then what we are having on top is the sale of PMS, which is just one of the products that comes out of this. What happens to the rest? And so you don't want to look at this, this crime that is going on. You know, it's, it's on. That's why some of us have said again and again that every capital Every state capital in Nigeria can be like the city of Dubai. This has nothing to do with daydreaming. It has to do with how blessed we are as a people and what we know, you know, based on our natural and the ingenuity of the human capital that we have. So when you look at all of these things, you begin to feel so sorry for our country, you know, and this is why we will never stop. This is why we're going to, this is why we must ensure that we have the right people coming to government and governance. You know, like you said, I don't know how this, you know, because on one hand, I describe it this way that you have, you know, for some people, uh, you have the ability to bribe the police people. And so when you get to the police people, when you cross the red light, what you do is that you, you, you bring out money and pay them. But state capture, it has to do with the fact that you're not paying the police people. 
the cars you are driving, as a matter of fact, you have the police people driving you. You have them. They, they lead you, you know. So for those who understand the two narrative that I've given, that's, this is what is playing on right now. And then we're going we're gonna to see how this is going to pan out, you know, while we are in court. And um, even though, again, thank God we're having this discussion. I know for the judges, uh, I learned clearly that um, – uh, the, the the bill to extend the retirement age of the judges has been extended from 65 years to 70 years. And uh, that's supposed to be some form of palliative oh. for our judges. <laughs> anyway, let me not jump the gun. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> la, 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 la.